This is a model of the cell, and I'm going to point out some of the structures um, on this model, but I want to give you a three-dimensional look first. The back doesn't have anything. So um, the first thing I want to point out is this number over here, number 18. This is supposed to, I know it looks like a 78. It's just the way Europeans make, this is a German model, and that's the way they make their numbers. So this is actually an 18, and this is a 17 down here. But number 18 is supposed to represent the outer boundary of the cell, which I have to admit is not really present in this model, right? There's no visible boundary, but let's pretend that it's there. That number there refers to the plasma membrane. And then the interior of the cell where this number 17 is, plus all of these little structures here, which are called organelles, is called the cytoplasm. The largest structure here in the center is the nucleus. The membrane around the nucleus is called the nuclear envelope. So you can hopefully tell, let me lie this down on the table. This is actually, I think, maybe a little bit better. You can see that this three-dimensionally is like a ball. See these numbers? Number one, that's a one, not a seven. And number two, you can't tell what they're pointing at. You can't tell, does number one refer to the nucleus or does it refer to the membrane around the outside of the nucleus, which is called the nuclear envelope. There are holes in the nuclear envelope. You can see them all over the place. And then over here in a cross section, you can see the holes up close. Those are called nuclear pores. So talk to me if I'm your instructor or whoever your instructor is to find out what do they want to do about this? Uh, number one, does that refer to the nuclear envelope and number or the whole nucleus? And does number two refer to the nuclear envelope, the whole nucleus or the nuclear pores, right? You can't tell. So what I say is when I write a test question, I always say, what is number one? And then in parentheses, I'll say the entire blue sphere or spherical structure. And the answer I'd be looking for is nucleus. Or I would say just the blue membrane. And then you would say nuclear envelope. Or I would say the, the holes that are here. And then you would say nuclear pores. I hope that makes sense. Inside the nucleus is a bunch of hair, right? That's DNA. DNA comes in two forms, and this is one of them called chromatin, and it really does look like a bunch of hair that you just pulled out of a hairbrush. So you see the sticker here that is stuck to the chromatin, and then you can see number four is referring to these white balls. Those are called nucleoli, which is plural for nucleolus. Nucleolus is a small structure. I guess I should be talking about the function of these things. So the nuclear pores are the holes that allow substances to move in and out of the nucleus. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that the nuclear envelope and the plasma membrane are both just containing what's in the cell, right? The uh, chromatin DNA is our genetic material. Um, these nucleoli function to make ribosomes. So let's talk about ribosomes. Number seven is near a bunch of red dots. And those red dots are each ribosomes. And then if you look over here in this blue membranous structure, you can see that there are ribosomes stuck to that. So this is called endoplasmic reticulum. There are two kinds of endoplasmic reticuli. And that um, is one type with ribosomes all over it. It's called rough endoplasmic reticulum. This one does not have ribosomes. So it's called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Here's some more smooth. Again, I'm talking about the blue structure here. And then here's some more rough endoplasmic reticulum. We're not covering this in uh, this class. And over here is the Golgi apparatus, um, also known as the Golgi complex. Both terms are accurate. And then these orange structures, sometimes not cut open, sometimes cut open so you can see what's on the inside. These are mitochondria. I forgot to talk about the function of them though. So the function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes is to make proteins because ribosomes make proteins. So if the rough ER has 
ribosomes on it, then it's also going to make proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum cannot make proteins because it doesn't have any ribosomes. So it makes other things. The mitochondria in orange here makes ATP. They make ATP. Mitochondrion is singular. Mitochondria is plural. The Golgi complex or apparatus modifies things that are made in the endoplasmic reticulum, like it might add a carbohydrate to a protein, for example. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I'm just looking at my list here. So um, I've gone over everything so far. So that's it.